Hello everybody, good evening and welcome to today's live stream or good afternoon, good morning, I guess there's so many time zones in the world, it could be whatever time. Um, I'm your host, Mod Aiza, and I'm joined by Mod Aiza, just me. <laughs> Aren't you lucky? Unfortunately everyone else is a little bit busy, so it's it's just us for this evening, so it's going to be a nice cosy little stream. We're going to be doing something a little bit different, it's not been done before. Uh, I'm going to go through the most recent blog that we put out. Talk about some of the changes that we made, try and answer some of the questions that you asked as best as I can, bearing in mind that I'm not a developer, and I will be the first to admit that I have been relatively detached from the project up until yesterday when I stepped in and um, helped with some of the most recent feedback that you've seen if you read the blog earlier today. Um, so yeah, it, it's going to be an experience for us all, uh, first time, but hopefully it'll go well, and if not, we'll have a good chance at least for a little bit of a chin wag. I'll try and get some questions from chat. We've got some questions that we've gathered over the last few days, some of which we've already answered in today's blog, um, but it is what it is. And what I'll probably do is not read through the entirety of the blog, but I'll go through the most recent changes that we made today, as well as those that we made on, when would the 15th have been? Two days ago. That would have been Tuesday, I think. Probably. All right, but before we get into that, I've got some announcements that I'm going to go through as per usual. So let's get ready. I'll try and speed run these. First of all, exclamation mark game update. <laughs> I love the text that's been put into these for me to read out. The one element that is scripted. Get ready. Oh, what a difference a few trees make. Lovely. Find out which Pulse 77 changes went live out this week. Plus, there's an update on our quest speedrunning competition. Exclamation mark game update for all of the information in regards to that. Now, as for the quest speedrunning competition, if you do exclamation mark QSR, we're challenging you to a quest speedrunning competition to win 30 days worth of membership. So how fast can you complete the two new quests? You can find out more with exclamation mark QSR. There's that one. Give me just one moment, please. It's really cold in my room today, so I'm a little bit sniffly. Um, so I may just randomly mute every now and then, and that's what I'm doing it for, just in case you're wondering. Next up, we have exclamation mark rewards. And guess what? We're going to be going over it all today. So you don't really need to click the link. But if you do want to check it out in your own time, with exclamation mark rewards, you'll be able to have a look back through some of the extra information we've added for the mysterious quest. There's um, potential loot you could be rewarded from, the phantom boss. You can let us know what you think with the links listed at the bottom. I did not read the script very well. My brain was not functioning, so that probably sounded a little bit disjointed. I'm sorry in advance, Mudlight. I know that you're going to a lot of effort to put this together, but I just melted a little bit. I'm under pressure being here all on my own. So, uh, something that's actually quite exciting, and not the hype train that's about to start in chat, by the way. That's pretty cool. Um, exclamation mark summit. Clear your schedules because the winter summit is coming on the 10th of December. Check it out to find out what we have planned for 2023. Make sure you mark it in your calendar by checking out the link in exclamation mark summit. You'll get all the information in there. It's going to be live on this channel, 10th of December. Can't remember if we specified the time, but it's in the evening. So you, you, you'll be around, right? There's not much else happening on Saturday. Apparently there's like a football match or something that might be going on, but you can second screen it just like you second screen all day when you're playing old school. And then last but not least, in terms of our announcements, exclamation mark merch. So it's time to get festive, and what better way to do that than with new merch? Get cosy with our new Christmas jumper and toast the season with the Jolly Boar Tankard, available with the link on exclamation mark merch. And we can see here a lovely image of said Christmas jumper, which is the gnome child Santa Claus. <laughs> Fantastic. It actually looks pretty good. Uh, Zonda, I see you in chat. I did not say the new mystery quest is coming out December the 10th. No. The... Old School Winter Summit is December the 10th, which is where we talk about all the new content that's coming out uh, in 2023. The release date for the Mysterious Quest, however, will hopefully be revealed during the Winter Summit on the 10th of December. So if you want to know exactly when it's coming out, make sure you tune in. But this is about merch right now. What a lovely jumper that is. Okay, moving on from the jumper, we have a sneak peek of the week. So uh, next week's update, you'll get to see a little example of it here. We're finally ready to release Poison Dynamite, which means that Pulse 76 will truly be finished once and for all. It took a little bit of a time to get done, but uh, hopefully well worth the wait. So I know this one will be interesting for a lot of those skiller accounts out there, being able to complete quests and content and such with a bit ease, a bit more ease now than they did before. Um, this is something that Mod Dylan has been working through. 
going through all of your feedback from our various betas to ensure Poison Dynamite meets your expectations. And we can't wait to see you all enjoying it in game. So unique account builds should hopefully find it very beneficial. And that about wraps up our sneak peek of the week, which is conveniently quoted in stars, which is really cute. I realize there's not as much time when I'm here on my own talking to pause and stuff. So uh, apologies if you just get random moments of silence. But now on to our updates to the mysterious quest, re quest rewards. I can't speak. I'm fumbling. Okay, so the plan is I'm going to read through the changes that we made today. I'm going to read through some of the changes that we made yesterday, uh, Tuesday, sorry. If you've already read the blog, then this may not be all that exciting for you. If you haven't read the blog yet, however, then make sure you stay tuned, listen in. I'm going to go over it, and then we've got a bunch of questions that I'm going to read out afterwards. So the next, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, it's pretty much just going to be me reading. So I hope you like my voice. I'll try and be clear as possible <laughs> and not have to pause loads, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I would read the entire blog, but I think would actually be here for the entirety of the hour that we've got on the live stream. So, um, yeah. And in the meantime, if you at Old School RS with any questions that you've got, our wonderful community management team should hopefully be in a position to start gathering those questions. And I'll do my absolute best at trying to answer them if we've got time after I've gone through some of the questions that we've already gathered that we collected over the last few days. All right, here it goes. So... I think what I'll do is I'll scroll past today's changes and we'll go to the changes that were made on Tuesday because today's changes, some of them are related to some things that we said in the last update. So it might be a little bit disjointed if I went back in time. So we're going to go back in time to go forward in time. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, if you're not familiar with this blog, basically what we're looking at doing is releasing a mysterious quest and a mysterious boss to go along said mysterious quest. Oh, so much mystery all of which have currently passed the polls. So this is coming out. However, we need to make sure that we've got some rewards from the boss. So what rewards did we look at offering? Well, first of all, we have the, let me make sure I'm in the right place. I'm not, let me scroll down, keep scrolling. It's a big blog, there's a lot in here. Uh, this is all the new explanations that have been added. All right, cool. So first of all, there is the absolutely extremely enticing Phantom Essence which is a consumable that we're going to be using to charge a lot of the rewards that we talk about in the blog. Um, some of them are going to be used for permanent one-time upgrades. Others are going to be a consumable essence. And one of the things that we'll use it as a consumable essence is the potential um, blood letter bow. So the blood letter bow is a ranged weapon that requires 80 range to use. And basically it has a unique effect of being able to hit multiple targets in succession, similar to a chin chomper but with heightened accuracy and a little bit of diff a different way of achieving it. So instead of just hitting in AOE or um, like Ice Barrage does, it will instead hit one target and then look for a near target that will bounce over to, and that can potentially bounce to another target or bounce back to the main target. So it's like jumping across NPCs rather than hitting them all at once. Should make for some pretty uh, unique um, encounters, um, a few nice use cases for it, which some players have started to already kind of come up together with. Now, again, I'm not going to go through all of it because there's a lot of detail in here. But as you can see, we go into explain exactly how the bouncing mechanism works um, for various different NPCs, as well as then the typical DPS graphs that show you some form of indication as to where it sits power level wise. Now, after that, and look, we can see, look, a new question has been added, but I'll cover that in a moment. We have the Soul Blight icon and Scepter. The Soul Blight icon is essentially an item that gets dropped from the boss that you can then use to upgrade the Ancient Staff. By doing so, it gives the Ancient Staff an extra 5% magic strength bonus as well as some improvements to its magic accuracy and other stats. But then it also gives 10% additional effects to all Ancient Magics. Some of them benefit better than others do. Um, and I think it's important to confirm because someone has asked and one of the questions is, do these increased effects work in PvP as well as PvM? And yes, it's just across the game entirely. No different restrictions in terms of where they'll be effective. Um, but you can see here we get an increase to Blood Magic so you'll be able to heal more. Ice magic so that you can freeze for longer. Shadow magic, magic kind of like makes the um, the stat drain a little bit more effective. I know it's not widely used at the moment, but there may be some cases for it. And then the smoke magic makes it so that the poison deals a little bit more damage because it increases the amount of time that you can poison your opponent for. Now, one thing that's important to uh, keep in mind, which I'll touch on with our updates that we put out today, is that this isn't the end of what you... This isn't the last time you'll see the Soul Blight Scepter. If this passes a poll, 
then we do have plans for it with future content that we intend to reveal during the Winter Summit. And I know, like, it's the whole carrot on a stick and elements of surprise and mystery and whatnot, but we're, we're not ready to talk about it just yet, and we do really want to have that hype moment available for the Summit, but I think you'll be really happy when you hear what we've got planned. Um, and it shouldn't be too much longer until we can actually start talking about what our intentions are further past this particular mystery quest. Um, so something else to look forward to. It's not meant to be an absolute showstopper of an item. This content is relatively mid to end game, I would say. It's, it's not the most difficult, but I'll talk about that a little bit later on. Um, now, after the Soul Blight Scepter, we have the Saturated Heart. This is essentially where you get to use Phantom Essence on the Imbued Heart to upgrade it, make it a little bit more powerful, it increases the magic buff that you can get from it, therefore increase the amount of magic damage that you can do overall. And there's also a new question been added today, which gives it the Divine Potion effect as well, if you so desire for it to do so. Uh, I think the other thing that's important to note is that we've also, as part of this, reduced the cooldown. Um, so it has um, a lower cooldown than the Imbued Heart would. Although I'm reading it now and maybe I just got it wrong and that's no longer included in there anymore. But I'm pretty sure that it was meant to have reduced the cooldown by two minutes. I'll have to double check and maybe we'll put a little update out before the poll goes live. And then lastly, the, um, the last reward from this new boss are Magister's Brews, um, which is essentially an upgrade to the Ancient Brew. So it's just slightly increasing the, um, uh, again, magic level that you can get as a buff from the Ancient Brew, just to bring it up a little bit more in power. And again, uses the Phantom Essence as a consumable in order to be able to do that. So as a whole, that's pretty much everything that was included in the blog. We've made a bunch of different changes um, since it was released and I'm going to go through what those are now. So, scrolling all the way back up. Again, I told you, there's a, there's a lot. <laughs> so, back on Tuesday, this was uh, our first kind of like look at the feedback that we were given. And um, initially, there was a lot of confusion as to why the Saturated Heart and Magister's Brew essentially had the same effect, and it just didn't seem to make sense, because why would you use one over the other? So, in response to that, we look to reduce the effect of the Magister's Brew slightly. That's the magic potion that boosts your magic level, just so that it didn't feel the exact same as the Saturated Heart. So it went from a plus four, a four plus ten percent buff to a three plus eight percent buff to your magic level. Um, and in here, we did mention that we considered giving the Saturated Heart the Divine Potion effect, but felt like it would have been better suited for future content. That since has changed, and I'll go over that in just a moment. Um, you know. <laughs> Say so we won't do anything similar in the future. We kind of did that in the future. Um, that was the only real change that we made uh, in the actual blog. The rest of it was mostly just clarifications. So we talked about why we wanted it to be another ranged weapon and uh, why did it have to be a bow. And um, I won't talk about the bow side of it because we've since changed our opinion on that. But in terms of why another ranged weapon, I think it is just uh, important to re-highlight that when you look at the full picture, melee combat has actually had the most updates really um, and with the release of a new best in slot magic weapon from tombs of a mascot um, it felt like magic was getting plenty of love too so ultimately because we only have three combat styles it just felt like ranged was the, be the best one to do there's also some other reasons that i can't really go into because they're secret reasons but uh, it will all make sense once everything has been fully revealed i'm uh, i'm certain of that um, but now since this has gone out we have offered alternate options which again i'll cover in just a moment um, I think one of the big ones here, which is uh, important for me to address, and I'll go through this one in some detail at least, is why does it have to be a charged weapon? So the Bloodletter Bow is um, pitched as being a weapon that is infused with Phantom Essence in order to be able to achieve the multiple bounces that it hits. Um, now, we're aware, obviously, of the fact there's a lot of feedback surrounding this item requiring charges, and... Some players really don't like the thought of having to go back to content to maintain a weapon and be able to use it going forward. Um, other players don't mind. For us, the main aspect of this was the balancing decision in the sense that having charges means that there's a trade-off. You have to spend time in order to be able to get them uh, to then use the weapon so we can afford to let it have a little bit more power than it would normally have if it was just a normal weapon. That being said, what we want to do is strike a really healthy balance where it doesn't feel like you're being forced to go out of your way to have to go back to this boss and constantly grind it in order to be able to upkeep the weapon. Um, that is really important because we know how, well, in all honesty, how awful that can feel. 
So we don't want a situation like the scythe is currently, where you spend hours making blood, blood runes for just a few minutes of use. Um, or something on the complete opposite end of the uh, uh, equation, like the, um, the Bofa Dinan, the Bofa, where you just, by the time you've ended up getting a crystal seed, you don't even have to worry about charges because you can just permanently charge it. And that was in response in the past. That, that wasn't a thing when the Bofa first came out. It was an addition that we made that you could charge it permanently because players were frustrated about having to go back to the gauntlet in order to be able to maintain that weapon. Um, we feel like that we can get a really good balance though between it feeling fun to use and it not feeling like a pain in the ass to have to come go and constantly recharge. Um, and that then lets us create this weapon that has a bit more power than what it probably should have for its actual intended levels. Um, outside of that, I spoke to a few devs within the team and they gave me some of their thoughts too. And I think it's kind of worth sharing from a design perspective. And now these aren't my words. I'm probably going to mess this up a little bit. So bear with me as best as, uh, as you can. But this talks more a little bit about how consumable resources can benefit the game long term. Um, so not looking at an individual player perspective. Because um, again, we are hoping that we get that balance right where it doesn't feel like a pain to have to recharge the bow. It does feel just part of your normal gameplay loop. But for a game that's all about gathering, converting, and using resources for a variety of things, there just isn't a huge amount of diversity within that ecosystem. Um, when you look at what most of the game offers in terms of resource consumption, it's mostly via skilling. You know, things like logs being burnt for XP or being converted into bars. The bars then can get converted into things like darts, which just leave the game um, after you've used them, or armor that gets turned into GP. Um, and that's all stuff that can also be removed from the game via various different NPCs and such like that. Um, now, without the introduction of like new skills and new item syncs and stuff, we can lead ourselves to a, a situation where every source of resource generation is generally the same. Um, and the only other alternative that we can have is boss drops. Um, you know, some bosses can can drop things like ores, herbs, bars, alkabores and stuff, but um, there are some negatives aside from that. So first of all, um, some of the devs that, that work on design feel like it's boring if every boss has virtually identical drop tables, um, but also feel like it can hurt the economy if there's too many resources getting put into the game, um, like regardless of what you do. So introducing new resources can be really important as a, as a healthy um, game balance mechanic. Um, it also allows for meaningful choice where resources are obtained and lowers the impact of other resources being pumped into the game as well. So if we can introduce something like Phantom Essence, which has a value associated to it, it means that we don't then have to consider other resources being added to a drop table to help balance out the GP per hour that you'd expect to get from that boss as a player which then allows for more room for those other resources to continue flourishing, maintain their price, and so on and so forth. So if we looked at, for example, a boss only dropping Snapdragon seeds, it would drastically affect the price of the seed over time. Now, if it only drops Snapdragon seeds 50% of the time and the other 50% of the time it dropped Adamant Ore, then it hurts them both equally, but still, there's a net negative. So ideally we don't want to have any significant effect on resource with each new pvm update that gets added to the game we want to see increases and decreases of supply and demand as players do different things uh, it shouldn't be a global negative across the board so if we look at snapdragons again and continue on with that they actually benefited with the next update simply by making that boss do quite a lot of damage it meant the meta was that you had to use a lot of brews and restores so it had a positive effect on the economy because players end up using a lot more resources so this is where a charged item can help come in. So for the economy to work, players have to use resources. If every boss did no damage and used no supplies every kill, then a lot of items would plummet to price, plummet their price, sorry, and then make them less desirable to farm. So it's essentially an alternative way for players to consume resources that wouldn't, you know, that would otherwise be resources that would be consumed in other instances as well. But on top of that, and I kind of touched on this at the very start, um, we don't have a huge amount of vectors when it comes to item balancing game. We have a really simplistic combat system, as I'm sure you're all aware because you play. So a cost associated with using a weapon, 
can lead to more meaningful choices of where you might use it um, or how powerful its extra effects might be. So it's a balancing vector we can utilize when we determine the power of an item. So they kind of like go hand in hand to make charge weaponry, weaponry actually quite a healthy thing for the game. Um, but all of those game benefits aside, we're obviously aware that charging items can often feel like a pain to do. That is very much a given. We can see that day in, day out. Whenever we've proposed them in the past, there has been similar comments and complaints. So it's not like we want to just completely ignore them, but we just believe that there's a flaw currently in how charge weaponry um, has been implemented rather than the, there being a problem with the nature of having charged weaponry as a whole. Um, if we look at, for example, the Revenant weapons, there's very little complaints we really see about them because you get so much ether that it just doesn't matter. You, you get it just as a byproduct of doing the content. You want to do the content because you get good money from it. But like I touched on before, the Scythe of Vitor, for example, is the complete opposite where you spend so much time gathering blood runes to then have to spend so much more time gathering blood runes after doing one raid. Uh, I think Zora can fit in a pretty okay place now with the amount of scales that you get for the amount of uniques that you have to grind for at Zora. By the time you've got them, you've probably got enough scales to keep yourself going. And if not, the boss is still rewarding enough that it's okay to go back to, even if it does feel like a bit of a grind. Um, charging something like Iban staff, for example, is something that isn't overly demanding. You just go to an NPC and chuck some money at it. You know, the cost of the spell then is just some fire runes and a death rune. So um, we're not looking at having something that is going to feel like a slog, take absolutely ages, or feel like you have to go back. We just want to try and have a go at striking that healthy balance and seeing what happens. Um, hopefully, this explains some of the benefits of charge weaponry a little bit more. Um, we fully acknowledge the fact that it can be done badly, and we're really hoping that this time round it won't be so. Um, obviously, we're very open to feedback. We're very open to change. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. We can always look at doing a, a similar um, route of action that we did for the Bofa, where we just made it so that it could be corrupted and you never had to worry about charges after a certain point again. So, yeah, hopefully that helps that point. Um, <clears throat> I think there's no real point me going over the whole blood letter bow bounce effect because it's a lot of detail and honestly, it's much easier if you just check the blog out yourself and have a look at the images. I will not do it justice, spend some time reading through it. Um, alternatively, um, maybe someone will put out a video guide that can that can do it justice because I definitely won't be able to right now and I will probably cause more confusion than it is worth. Um, so let's talk about the let's talk about the changes that we made today. Let's talk about what actually happened because I can relate to this a little bit more and um, I can also talk about the whole feedback side of things too. Excuse me. <clears throat> so. First of all, let's talk about actually how your feedback was handled. I won't read this like vertebrim as it is in the blog because it's there and I'll just use my own words to some degree. But there was a quite a big point when we released the blog on Tuesday that a lot of feedback had just been ignored, that we didn't make changes that had seemed very obvious um, for us to be able to proceed with. And that caused a lot of frustration and rightly so, you know, at the end of the day, that's exactly how it did appear. So um, why was that the case? When I was looking through everything, when I had a, a check over the, the feedback and started to analyze it and, and really try to understand what the main problems were, I came to two conclusions. And number one was that we just did a really crap job of explaining um, exactly what you should expect from the boss. We didn't detail that at all. So when you're looking at something you know, a bow that has level 80 range requirement um, and then seeing its effective power and thinking, no, this should be stronger. Uh, or the scepter, you know, this should be much stronger as well. Its, it's effects are, aren't, aren't good enough. Um, it makes sense because you don't know how difficult the content is intended to be. So it's really hard to gauge exactly where those items should sit. So what we've done in today's blog is basically explained how well, I explained how the boss is going to be a little bit in terms of difficulty. So the comparison that we've used for the phantom boss from the new Mysterious Quest is if you were to imagine Vorkath with lower stats, but a few more mechanics. 
So Vorkath itself isn't the most, in, it's not the most challenging of bosses. Once you've figured out Vorkath's th very few mechanics, it's it's really easy fight to kind of um, master. But it still takes quite a while because Vorkath's got quite high defense and HP stats. So imagine uh, a slightly more mechanically challenging version of Vorkath, but one that will die a lot faster. So you won't need to have as high stats because your accuracy won't matter as much because the defense won't be as high. You won't have as high HP, but you will have to pay a little bit more attention. So where does that sit in terms of combat levels? The quest version, we reckon you're going to need to be around about 85 combat level in total. And then the farmable version after the quest is completed, you probably want to have 95 combat at a minimum. But obviously the higher combat you are, the much better of an experience you're going to have in terms of consistent kills and trips. But it will be relatively completable with someone at 95 in, in combat. So nowhere near the level of difficulty as, you know, like the likes of Inferno or trying to solo Nex um, or solo uh, Nightmare, so on and so forth. So that's why when we didn't look to make a massive amount of changes to the bow or to the scepter based off the feedback we were getting, because... Quite frankly, if we had incorporated all of that feedback, we would have just been introducing absolute power creep for what is going to be relatively accessible and farmable content. These items are quite literally meant to fit a niche for that mid-game player that is looking to transition between, for the Scepter especially, from Aram's staff over to a Kodai Wand or even a Nightmare staff. There isn't anything in the middle that they can use at the moment. The Scepter fits nicely into that position as the new best in slot for ancient magic spells especially, whilst also giving some niche uses outside of just general play. So some areas in PvP and I'm sure there are some instances players will find use for it. For the bow itself, again, it's not meant to compete with the Twisted Bow. The Twisted Bow has its purpose, it's very much set there as this be all and end all best in slot ranged weapon for a lot of situations. The blowpipe then does very similar, but for much lower defense targets. And this can sit somewhere in between the two for when you want to go and fight against multiple NPCs that you might not normally use ranged at. Um, I saw an interesting take, and I don't think by any stretch of the imagination this will become the meta. Um, but using the bow at something like Dust Devils, maybe you just don't want to burst that task one day, but you still feel like killing more than one. And actually, you know, you, want, you kind of want to get your ranged up. You could probably use it there if you really wanted to. Just weird little intricacies and, and niche uses like that, as well as some pretty powerful ones that other players have started to theorize as well. Um, I know that there's some information players are looking at for larger NPCs, so for the, the 4x4s, for example. We only covered 1x1 NPCs and 3x3 NPCs, but um, different use cases out there. Maybe even something like, you know, people in chat are saying things like pest control could end up working pretty well in there. Anywhere that's got multi-combat where you might feel like using range, but I've never really felt like it's worth it because you can only hit one target. Well, that's going to potentially change with this bow. But again, just to reiterate, it's not meant to be absolute best in slot. It's not meant to tread on the toes of, of other weapons. It's meant to fit nicely in and provide that niche use case. Um, now, the second area in terms of feedback and why it might not seem that we've kind of taken on, as, on board as much as we could have um, is quite frankly... The reality is that this content was designed quite a while ago. Um, so we obviously introduced a new polling system um, last month, on the 27th of October, in fact, so just over three weeks now, um, where we talked about how we want to put forward a content pitch and then ask for your ideas in terms of what rewards and such would come from that content and really involve you in that journey a lot more than we have been doing in the past. We're just in a really unfortunate situation where we're still kind of transitioning between the two, still trying to figure out exactly how it works. And this was really our uh, quote unquote guinea pig. It was our test subject in terms of how to approach it with new polling in mind. So there's been a lot of learning points from our side, um, but also it doesn't help the fact that we already had a design in mind um, that we uh, you know, have made progress on already, which isn't something that we'll be doing going forward. And you'll see uh, a lot of differences when it comes to the content that we offer from the Winter Summit, um, which will be all announced on December the 10th. So make sure you're there for that. Um, but yeah, really, it's just, as I say, those two things just made it very difficult where 
a lot of the feedback we were getting just didn't make sense to implement because it wasn't appropriate for the power level and then others that just weren't feasible because we'd already had something in mind and there are reasons as to why certain rewards are being offered that are very much tied into the story of the quest which obviously you don't know a huge amount of detail about so that makes it hard so a lot of learning points for us going forward we're going to be using a lot of this to help shape how we pitch future content to you um, but also I think the main one is that in the future if this same kind of content was to be um, pitched it would be more of a case of we're going to you know should we release a new quest you say yes to that we ask if you want a new boss to come from the quest you say yes to that and then we say what kind of rewards would you like to come from this boss and maybe one of those questions is uh, you know an item that focuses on melee or an item that excels in range damage against multiple targets or you know an item that specializes in fast um, slow, fast but weak magic attacks we can we can then go into that level of detail so then you can really be telling us if you don't want another ranged weapon, you don't have to have another ranged weapon. And then we can go away, design something, and then present that to you um, later on. So in the actual blog here, you'll see that we've got a link to the polling changes. If you've not checked them out yet, go and have a look at that because it explains the new process entirely. Um, so you'll be able to see exactly how we're going to approach it and how we look to bring you on board a lot more in the future. So... I think that's covered most of what we needed to cover in terms of feedback side of things. Uh, now the actual bow itself. So, can, oh sorry, I got distracted by Elphias. Can Elphias come to old school like cosmetic? Uh, Noah, honestly, I've been championing it for so long. At this point, I feel like it's never going to happen because I'm just being memed on by the team, but I would love that. Honestly, I would. One day, one day, man can dream. <clears throat> okay, so... Why is the bow not being made really strong or much stronger? My previous explanation is why. It just doesn't make sense. If we make it super strong, it literally is just adding on power creep for the sake of power creep. And there's a lot more content that we could bring out that has much more powerful things than what this is aimed at. It's not really meant to be that absolute new best in slot. It's meant to be filling in between gaps. That being said, there is one change that we do want to look to make into the bow, which is based off feedback we got from the players. And that was, why does it have to be a bow? If we're going to go over range weapon, then fine, but why does it have to be a bow? So do you know what? I asked the question. Well, I didn't actually ask the question because I thought we had to stick with the bow because law makes sense as to why it's a bow, and you'll realize. Excuse me, my lunch was trying to come back up. <laughs> Thank God I got the mute button on, on lockdown. Um... So I thought originally we weren't going to be able to ask this question because there's very much a reason why a bow was offered in the first place. However, I am happy to confirm that we have put in a question that allows you to choose what type of range weapon it should be. So I'll scroll down a little bit. I'm going to be a little bit all over the place here with this one. Uh, and this is how we are looking at pitching it. So a new question was added, poll question two, which says if the bloodletter bow is added to the game, should it be in the form of a different ranged weapon and the highest voted option will win and be added to the game? So the options are, number one, keep it as a bow. Number two, change it to a thrown weapon. And number three, change it to a ballista. So I tried to look at what the most popular suggestions from the community were. And the three most popular that weren't a bow were boomerang, my personal favorite, by the way, I'd love a boomerang, uh, like chakrams, you like throwing stars or something like that. Um, and then the ballista. So I look, you know, we, we don't really want to have like six different options because it doesn't make that much sense in a multiple choice poll. So changing it as a thrown weapon leaves it a little bit open to interpretation, I understand. But when we say thrown weapon, one thing I want to clarify is it we don't mean something like darts or knives that would you'd need to collect a multiple of. It would be a one item that you would then charge with the phantom essence. So regardless of how the outcome of this poll ends, the actual bow stats or ranged weapon stats itself would be the exact same as they are offered in the blog. The effects would be the exact same. The only difference that I anticipate we might need to make is if it moves away from a bow, then we have to take into account arrows and them offering range strength. So similarly, if it turns into a ballista, we may have to look at javelins and the javelin range strength that they offer. But there's no point trying to figure out exactly what to do with that just yet until we know exactly what type of weapon style people want. So I imagine if, say for example, 
Throne weapon becomes the most popular option. And I boycott... Not boycott, sorry. That's the opposite. Um, I don't know. I can't think of words right now. I spoke too much. But I, I really get behind Boomerang and I convince the team that we need, we need the Throne weapon to be a Boomerang. Then we'll probably take Endorse. There we go. Thank you, chat. You're all so clever. Um, so it's a Boomerang. Then we'll look at... Okay, all right. Do, do we make it so that it's based off Dragon Arrows or Rune Arrows, Amethyst Arrows? We'll then offer that as a secondary poll question in the future uh, once this particular question has um, gone through the polls itself. And in that way, you'll still have full control over what level of you know, power level it should sit at, but we can then take into account exactly how that would work because you can't really add arrows to a boomerang. I think it would have an impact on its aerodynamics just a little bit. Could make for an interesting thing, especially if you like power or phantom essence. But um, I think that's the only thing that would need to would need to consider. Otherwise, it would be the exact same as it's offered in the blog. It's just a, a, a cosmetic slash theming change more than anything. So that's one change that we made at least. So hopefully that made many people happy. It certainly made me happy. I'm part of the Broomerang gang. So yeah. Now next up was the Soul Blight Scepter. So we haven't made any changes to the Soul Blight Scepter at all. And the reason behind that is because, again, the level of content that this is coming from just doesn't warrant it being a super strong item. It should not in, like, really encroach on any other magic weapon that's out there. It should fill a gap. And we feel like it fills a gap really, really well um, for that mid-game player that wants to upgrade from an RM staff but can't quite afford uh, a Kodai Wand or a Nightmare staff or is an iron and is just not at that level of content just yet. It's a nice steady level of progression for them. So 5% magic strength bonus is actually pretty damn good. The only other thing that can compete with that, that is also able to auto cast ancients at that level is Aram Staff. And Aram Staff is two handed. Um, it also doesn't have the 10% ancients buff, albeit relatively small, it's still a buff. So it still makes it better than Aram Staff. And the Soul Blight Scepter also has higher magic accuracy. So, oh, you know what? Aram Staff is one-handed now. I remember we changed that. I just read in chat and I was like, is it still? And I think I actually put together the poll question for it. Um, the Master Wand does also auto-cast Ancients. You are right. But let me just quickly load the wiki so that I don't make a fool of myself again. Just very, very quickly. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Master Wand doesn't have any magic strength bonus. So it's zero in terms of magic strength bonus. I saw someone say that in chat. Um, so this gives 5% magic strength. So you deal more damage using the Soul Blight Scepter. But anyway, outside of my uh, mistake of two-handed Aram Staff, even it being one-handed, it's still better than it because it has higher accuracy and it has the 10% ancient, ancient magics buff. So that's why we didn't make any changes. The blog today basically just clarifies that stance um, with that extra context of the boss difficulty. So... Hopefully, that makes sense. And then the last thing that we did make a change for was the Saturated Heart. And the Saturated Heart, essentially, um, the main piece of feedback we saw from there was players felt like it should have the Divine Potion effect. Um, for those unfamiliar, the Divine Potion effect essentially makes it so that the boosts offered by potions, um, the, they don't naturally go down. Um, so that stat drain that you typically get um, every few seconds um, doesn't happen. You maintain that level of boost for the entirety of that potion being active unless some other form of um, game mechanic or interaction reduces your stats like sipping sorrow brews or um, being hit by a particular magic spell, um, so on and so forth. So we have added a new poll question um, alongside the saturated heart, which is whether or not it should have that divine potion effect so that when you use it, you would then maintain that, I think it's plus four and 10% of your magic level buff for the entire duration um, that it's active. And obviously the saturated heart, the benefit of it is that once the cooldown's over, you can just re-click it again. So it should make for a really interesting um, dynamic. So uh, I just saw a real quick question. I think it's really important to answer in this because it is also in the blog, but Masterbox2 has asked if the staff effect stack so I'm thinking this is about the Soul Blight Scepter. There's a lot of S's in there. But does it stack with Bloodbark Armor? And yes, it does, Master Box. Um, we also have calculations within the blog that kind of like shows you how that um, that would work. So in here, the effect also stacks multiplicatively. 
<laughs> yeah, that's a tongue twister, isn't it? With the blood bark armor. So it's 25% plus blood bark armor times one. There's so much math in here, but you, you get the idea. Go go read that. Um, multiplicatively. Multiplicatively. We'll move on. All right, I've got 19 minutes left of talking, so we have some uh, we have some questions that I'll try and get uh, get over get over <laughs> cover. I need to get over myself now, and I'm not doing math, Panzer. That's not happening. Not live on stream. Um, okay, so why wasn't the no divine effect on saturated heart voted? I'd like to actually cover this one because um, basically. Obviously, it is in there now, but it wasn't in there originally, right? We didn't offer it as a as a as a poll question to begin with. Why didn't we? And that was quite frankly because the content that the saturated heart's coming from doesn't really suit giving it a divine effect, given where divines come from. But at the end of the day, we we kind of like decided, you know what? We we decide and determine the law so we can find a reason as to why it can happen. So that was why. That was literally the honest reason as to why it didn't originally um, come from there. Aside from, we just didn't really feel like it was necessary. Uh, it was just that there is definitely other content that we're better suited. But at the end of the day, we can just give it the same effect, but not call it divine. So it won't be like the divine saturated heart. That would be very uh, counterintuitive, I think, and a bit misleading. Um, but that's the answer as to why, and it will now have that effect at least. So, if it passes in the polls, of course. Um, we had a question that just asked if we could explain the process of feedback reaching the dev team. Does the community feedback fail to reach the devs? Um, no, it doesn't. Uh, we spend a lot of time in community management gathering all of your responses, feedback, reading through all the comments, trawling through all of the hate and anger and frustration which it sometimes is justified, other times very much not, and it just makes our lives, well, not the best. But that's part of working in CM for old school at times, I guess. Um, and then we discuss that feedback at great length with the development team. But I think it's important to remember that there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of reasons why feedback doesn't always get included or taken on board or taken into account. And today's blog, try to cover some of those reasons. Um, but there are just so many, you know, things like law, the original design that we have in mind, um, thinking about long-term balance and health of the game. I, I could probably keep on reeling out many, 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 many different reasons. I think the key takeaway from this though, is that I feel like we can improve ourselves in terms of explaining why certain feedback points have been rejected. Um, so that you're aware, at least, if you've seen something that's been quite popular within the community that has seemingly been dismissed, you know why. Uh, and I think that's something that we can we can start looking to improve upon, especially as we move more towards a community consultation and uh, kind of like involvement um, era of polling. So, yeah. All I can say is that it definitely does go to the team. We talk about it in a lot of detail. We go through various different meetings, um, but we can't action everything. However, we can at least tell you why we've not actioned the main points and we'll look to improve on that. So uh, what else do we have on here? Um, uh, can I explain the blood letters bounce effect in detail? No, I can't, unfortunately. I'm, I haven't been involved enough, so <laughs> sorry about that. Why is the bow a combination of single target and AoE? And are there any plans to just pick one and own it? I think that's the beauty of the bow, is that it can do both, but it's not meant to own single target. It definitely is more of an AoE weapon, but not full AoE in the likes of Chin Chompers and Barrage. So we can definitely make items that own AoE. We can definitely make items that own just in single target. This isn't one of them. This is meant to fill uh, a gap that we think exists. So uh, there was another question in here as well about if there could be an alternative solution other than every boss having unique currency that players need to farm to use the unique it drops. Uh, probably, yep, there probably are alternate solutions, but I did go on quite a big ramble at the start of the stream talking about why unique currencies can be healthy additions to the game. Um, we just need to strike a good balance between them, and that's what we're trying to do here. Um, let me have a quick, oh, okay. This is an interesting one. 
Well, it's not that interesting, actually. I don't know why I said that. But why is Soul Blight stuff untradeable? It's good to be able to buy and sell on a main account or else we play on an Iron Man account. True. Very true. That's fair. But you know what? Sometimes it's good to just have items that you have to actually grind for, even as a main, to show that you know, you've unlocked the access to it and you have a certain level of power that is um, reflective of the fact that it's just not something you can go out and buy. There's quite a few instances of that throughout the game. I mean, look at um, Vorkath with Vorkath heads to make the, um, um, oh my God, the assembler, whatever, it, accumulator. I can't even remember the name of it now. Why can't I remember this? <laughs> you know the one I mean. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's just one of those things. So yeah. The uh, Fire Cape, the Inferno Cape, the Fighter Torso, the Defender. Um, there are there are so many untradeable items that you use as a main throughout the game. And um, typically players have quite liked that. So, yeah. Plus as well, even something like Void and then getting Elite Void. Um, it's just one of those. I think it's just a part of old school and what makes old school old school. We're not necessarily doing it in a way to force players to feel like they have to... Um, go out of their way to get it, like go to that boss. Um, this is an item that if you're a main, you can quite frankly skip. Um, you could just go and buy a Nightmare Staff instead. Uh, it probably would be better um, if you can afford it. And if you can't afford it and you want an alternative, then you can go and farm this item. And you know what? It's, it's better than anything else that you have and it's free. So yeah. Plus as well, having them as untradeables mean that we can be a little bit more generous in drop rates, for example. We don't have to worry about it being something that might be 1 in 1,000 or 2,000. It could be a 1 in 50, like Warcraft Head, for example. So, yeah. Uh, I've seen a few questions about the Trident and whether the Soulblight Scepter will be better than the Trident. Um, I think in some situations it may well be, but for the most part, the Trident serves a very particular purpose of being a strong chargeable item that is single target whereas the soul blight is going to be used for ancient magics realistically and that's where it's going to fill so if you use an ancient magics it's very most likely that you're using burst or barrage spells anyway so um i don't think it will really impact the usage of the trident at all um cool now i've got some chat questions that i can get through to there's quite a lot actually so i'll do the best that i can um some of these aren't related at all to the um the blog that's out at the moment so I'll, I'll do my best to get through them and uh hopefully they answer some of the questions that you've asked so when do we get the game jam blog slash stream we are hoping to include a lot of the information a lot of information around what the devs worked on during game jam in the next gazette and the next gazette we're aiming to have out next week it may however be out the week afterwards because modsani is working on the gazette and he has been away this week on holiday so we just might need a little bit more time to get everything together. Um, is the Wilderness expansion still in the works? And is Menafoss or Valmor below Kebos slash the new Garden of Death quest being worked on? So the Wilderness expansion was never in the works. It was part of a game jam project uh, by Mod Soften um, with help from myself, Mod Goblin and Mod Rock. Um, there is a chance that it could be added into the game in the future. But if it was, then you'd be made aware of it because we would be pitching that as a concept. Um, and getting your kind of input on it. But at the moment, no, it's not being worked on. Um, Game Jam is now over, so I don't believe Soften is um, expanding on that any further. I believe that she'd basically got it to the point where she was really happy with it as a design, um, and it is now just there waiting to be picked up, um, if it should be. In terms of Menafoss and Volamore, um, no real plans. I know that there's appetite for both things to happen um, by many players and people within the team alike, but nothing concrete. So. I'm not going to turn around and say yes, because I would be lying. Um, will all future design blogs be like this mysterious quest blog? No. <laughs> no, they won't. Uh, for two reasons. First of all, we've learned, a, we've learned a lot when we've done this one. So there's a lot that we would look to change in the next blog in terms of how we approach things. But also because of the fact that this was content that we'd already had in the roadmap, we'd already designed. Um, and, and set a release date for so on and so forth before we even made the polling changes. You have to realize this is coming to the end of the year now and our roadmap was decided quite a while back, you know, over six months for the last uh, half of this year that it was kind of like, this is what we're going to look to offer. Uh, this is what we feel the players would like the most. So um, it's been difficult because we have transitioned from the old polling system to the new polling system. 
but still having old content lying around that needed to get through. Um, but yeah, I don't think anything will be like this in the future. It will be a lot more um, driven by you as players past the pitch process. So yeah. What else is there? When will the new quest be released? We will hopefully give you the release date uh, during the Winter Summit on the 10th of December. So make sure you tune in. Will we get a blog about the projects from the recent... Oh, okay, that was the Game Jam. I've already looked at that. Um, will we be receiving any hints about Volumor, Menafoss, Wilderness Expansion, etc. during the Summit next month? Um, no. Nope. But we'll talk about the Wilderness Expansion, at least, in the Gazette as we go over some of the Game Jam projects. So, yep. Um... If there's no targets in range for the bow to bounce to, will it still consume a charge even though its effect doesn't trigger? I believe the answer to that question is no. It will only consume a charge if it bounces to a target. So, yeah. Um, Goblin has asked, what is my perfect Sunday? Is this going to be like uh, a, a question that I put onto my online dating profile, Goblin? Are you helping me out here? <laughs> Give me, <laughs> doing me a solid? Perfect Sunday. Oh, do you know what? It depends on what kind of mood I'm in, right? There are many different options. I could either go for a long walk and then go for a nice pub dinner, chill out in the evening by the fire, watching TV. I could instead go to the gym, get home, want to do some DIY or do some project work, uh, as in like hobby projects, and then just chill out. Or alternatively, I think a great way to spend a Sunday, quite honestly, is getting up, having a nice hot shower, getting into comfy clothes, and then just gaming all day. Oh, so good, but it feels quite guilty now as an adult. So that's uh, my answers to a perfect Sunday, I guess. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, this is a good question. I like this one. Do you think the amount of detail and images required to explain just how the Bloodletter bow works is too complicated slash confusing? Any thoughts on having a simpler weapon design that may achieve the same niche slash design goal? Um... Yes, is my answer to that. I do think that it's too complicated and confusing. I think by large, that puts off a lot of players and it creates this weird aspect of not really knowing what it's meant to do, how good it is, how bad it is. So um, personally, I think in these instances, less information is more. And that's really counterintuitive to the way that my brain works as a community manager, because I've always been of the mindset of giving as much information as possible. If you look back to some of the older blogs that I put together, there's some of the longest blogs out there. And um, I used to work really hard to try and give as much detail as I could. However, in these kind of instances, there are just some things that you can't explain properly in text format, in image format. So we need to do one of two things, I think. And number one is change our approach so that we have a concept available in game for people to try or for us to use as a prototype that we can then showcase. Um, maybe having video content to explain it rather than just pure text format, or we just go very top level in terms of the details. I think um, if players weren't so accustomed these days to getting so much information, a much better way to have pitched the blood letter bow would have been to say, would you like a ranged weapon to be intru introduced to the game? that excels at hitting multiple targets and literally leaving it at that. Giving the stat requirements, um, giving the stats that it has, but leaving the effect as open-ended as that. And then um, the, main, the main thing is, what we have to remember is that, not remember or keep in mind, is that the poll questions really are meant to be, meant to be, hence the new poll system, but they're meant to be a, a way to indicate whether or not you want something and not necessarily how good or bad something should be in its first point of do you want it because we can always change things after they've been released we can always offer a beta before it gets into the game where you can try it out and determine whether or not it's too weak or too strong and then we can pull to make adjustments so in an ideal situation i would have preferred to have been do you want a range weapon that excels at multi hitting multiple targets yes or no if that passed we could then develop the bow or the boomerang, or the chakra, or the ballista, whatever it is, we could develop it. We then offer you a beta, and then post that beta, we gather your feedback on, how do you feel about the new ranged weapon? Is it too weak? Is it too powerful? Do you think the effects should change?
and then we can use that period to, to try and figure out exactly um, how it should then fit when it actually gets fully added into the game. Whereas at the moment, we're obviously fronting a lot of information that you just quite frankly can't always grasp the concept of how good or bad it's going to be until you've tried it out. Um, so yeah. We could have also just gone with a completely simpler design. I agree with that. But what do you do when <laughs> old school is quite simple in its own form? It's like another bow that shoots arrows at one target. It's like, well, we just added the bow first. So why would, why would we need to do that? Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, someone has asked if I can explain what Premier Club membership is. I can't find any information on what you get for Premier Club versus just paying month to month for old school. So for old school RuneScape, Premier Club is essentially just a way to get membership for cheap. Um, it's cheaper than buying each month um, on its own, but you don't get any extra benefits or rewards because we don't have um, you know, your traditional MTX in old school. So it is just cheap membership. Um, yeah. All right. I've got four minutes left. I, know, I, I was just about to say, I've got four minutes. I wonder how many questions I can get through. I'm, I realized... People at, at home can't hear uh, Modsphere talking to me about the fact we've got some UGC, user-generated content, to go through. So I'm having a conversation with him as if they can. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I just want to see if there's maybe like someone who is lucky that might just ask a question in chat right now that I can pick up and, uh, and try and um, answer. I know people have been asking about Deadman mode. Um, Goblin mentioned in chat, I spoke a lot about it in last week's stream. But for Deadman mode, there are no plans for Deadman mode to return this year. Uh, and for next year, uh, I can't confirm that there are solid plans for Deadman. I'd really like to say that there are, and I'd like Deadman to come back next year. But the reality is that we need to consider how Deadman is going to look. Do we want to continue down the road of having tournaments? Do we want to keep it a seasonal thing? How often should it come out? And if not, what else can we do for Deadman that, um, that satisfies that large portion of players that really enjoy it? So sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but... Um, Dead Man isn't something that that we're looking to bring out this year, but it's, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to work on something that, that may be a possibility next year, but I can't confirm anything. It's more of just a, a personal desire to have it because I love Dead Man. Um, I asked for a question and I got a lot, so phew, let me see if I can quickly get one here. Um... <laughs> Why don't you do anything about the scam streams? You're the creator of the game and second most viewed to scammer. Unfortunately, Harry Lou, we don't run Twitch, so we report them whenever they come up. But that is um, that is not uh, something that we have control of, unfortunately. We've tried. Um, best thing to do is report them. Don't click on them. Chat's moving so fast. Norm will see me appreciating Aliza for doing a solo Q&A for us. Aw, well, thank you, Repu Reputato. I hope you've enjoyed it. Why don't I buy Twitch? You know what? Why don't I just buy Twitch? You know what, chat? Why don't we just buy Twitch? I don't know, actually, Twitch might tell me off now for saying I'm going to buy them. I can't afford them, so. <laughs> all right, um, that is, I think, all that I have time for. So I hope you've enjoyed this solo q and I didn't want to cancel it because uh, we've canceled them in the past because of unavailability. We thought this would be a fun way to keep the stream going and try something different. Um, if you can maybe at me at Twitter, at JagXIEZA, uh, on how you felt about it, going over kind of blogs in this level of detail and talking about our decision-making process and some of the things that we've changed, as well as this bit more of a casual, quick-fire um, question form. I'd really appreciate it because we can look to do these um, obviously way more often. It's a lot easier to just get one of us onto the stream than a whole team. But um, I also would obviously really like the rest of the team to be able to join, but holidays and uh, schedules and stuff don't always allow. So before you do head off, though, that's got, we've got some community content that we want to show off. Some uh, fantastically creative players have been sending us their amazing artwork. So if we can, first of all, let me bring up my screen so I can see it myself. I've, I've hidden myself away behind the wiki all of this time. Let's have a look at, oh, we've got it here, the helmet. This is the Helmet of Nate is Not by Bon Jovi Friday. And honestly, attention to detail, spot on. And it looks functional, like you could actually wear it as opposed to it being a small helm. So big fan of that. I really, really like that. Very good. Okay, next one coming up is Skills Mobile Stand by Bygrove. And you know what? That is actually pretty darn cool. Perfect little slot as well for your charger to go into it. Very clever. And if you can get them customized, because I think... <laughs> 
If I was to get this one, then I'll just be called out for being fake because I'm not maxed. Very cool by Grove. I'm going to be in touch. I think I may need a little stand because my phone is just... Well, you probably heard it last stream. It just tries to buzz itself off the table. That would be a, a nice convenient way to keep it upright. And you know what? Maybe, you know, actually, if you're playing uh, at work, not that anyone does that with old school mobile, obviously. No one's playing whilst they're at work. That would be really good to just have next to your keyboard and you just, you know, tap away. Um, okay. Next one coming up is a wise old man tattoo that Jacob3100 has had. Very, very, uh, very wise old manish. It's also very old school aesthetic. The whole low poly um, model. How do you feel about RuneScape tattoos, chat? I think it's cool. I don't have any tattoos. I'm too, I'm too, um, I'm too weak. I feel like I'll change my mind and then regret having a tattoo. <laughs> Although I have always wanted a, a Legend of Zelda one, so maybe, uh, maybe it's just I need to find the right design and place for it. But very cool. Okay. Oh, I think we have another one here. This is also called Old School RuneScape Tattoo. And this is by Lopsided, Lopsided Love 4065. That, do you know what? That almost looks like it's been done with uh, like, uh, like an oil painting. It's like very pastel. I really like that, actually. The color on it is awesome. Big fan. Like it looks, that looks really cool. And the skull as well above. I only just noticed that. The RuneScape text too. And the little tattoo.jpg. You know what? That's I, I'm a, I like that one a lot. That was really cool. He's a tattoo poll when? <laughs> no. That's one thing I'm not letting the chat decide. All right. We've got something coming up from Legend Arts now. Excited for this. It's the new look of Barrett cards. Wow. Okay. I mean, when does Legend Arts ever fail to, uh, to deliver? What absolutely amazing artwork that is. Definitely deserves a poggers in the chat, I reckon. And yes, I just said poggers unironically. It do be that way sometimes. Very cool. And then lastly, we have from Guard Varrock. This is the Varrock Guard tweeting. <laughs> this this looks like something that Mod Light would have posted. And that's that that's not throwing shade at Mod Light. Mod Light's been absolutely owning our socials recently. So if you see any banger memes coming out, that is because it's been uh, it's been Mod Light's creativity and uh, absolute genius behind the uh, behind the blue bird. But I mean, to be fair, it is glow up time. They they do look so cool now, don't they? Well, that was it. That's all that we have time for. That's all of the uh, content that we've got from our players. That's all I have time for because my mouth now feels like it's about to uh, want to close. I'm so uh, my mouth is so dry. I need to drink. I've spoke way too much. That wasn't. That was an intense hour, but I thoroughly enjoyed myself. I hope you enjoyed yourselves too. Um, as I say, let me know how you felt about the stream. Feel free to give me your feedback at JagXIUser on Twitter. It's probably the best place for me to see it. Um, otherwise, I really appreciate everyone for tuning in today. And we will see you... Oh, no, I just opened the stream. I can hear myself. Ah, that was awkward. <laughs> yeah, we'll see you next week for um, probably more of a team-based Q&A, hopefully. If not, you might have me again. Who knows? But yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. Happy scaping. Make some glorious gains. And fingers crossed you get those uniques you've been looking for. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.